Good evening, Bahamas. This is NB12 broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Here's what's making news tonight. A family calls for justice after alleged police brutality. Just under 80% of murders solved this year. A John Canoe official defends Boxing Day scores, plus road traffic lines backed up for hours. Those stories and much more on the way, and the Kia DeVoe and NB12 starts right now. Here at NB12. In 2011, assault was the top complaint made to the Complaints and Corruption Unit of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. And according to the officer in charge of the South Central Grove Division, complaints of police brutality are not uncommon after suspects are taken into custody. Christina McNeil spoke with Superintendent Philip Don Wilson as an investigation was launched into what led a suspect to be rushed to the hospital last night. A family is alleging police brutality after their loved one was arrested, detained here at the South Central Grove Police Station, then had to be rushed to hospital last night. On Wednesday night, Alonzo Butterfield and his brother Ivan Forbes were taken into police custody in connection with the murder of a 22-year-old man on 3rd Street in the Grove. Butterfield, a business owner, was found in possession of two shotguns said to be licensed for use. They were confiscated from his Yellow Elder residence along with a quantity of ammunition. Butterfield and Forbes were transported to the South Central Grove Police Station. It is while in police custody that family members of the brothers allege they were beaten to the point that Butterfield had to be taken to the hospital for treatment. MB12 spoke with their mother, Eula Butterfield, outside the emergency room as she waited to hear more about her son's condition. But from what relatives, including the pair's aunt, say, Butterfield was a victim of police brutality. The ambulance attendants say he was beaten badly, so the police officers, those refused us to even look at, at him. So they called back up and they reversed the ambulance on the side and, and the Grove Station, you know what I mean? So I don't, I can't really say, you know what I mean? But, but he said, Mommy, I'm in so much of pain. I mean, it's so terrible in the Bahamas how we get treated. Um, the police tonight, it was so awful. It was about 30 of them, they call and just to bring Alonzo out of the police station where they beat him so bad. They um, called for so much a backup. They run the family member out of the police station yard. I thought the police station is a public place, not knowing it's a private place owned by officers. It's not nice how behemoths are treated. When family members went to the police station to see their loved ones, they say police told them to leave the premises and threatened them with arrest. Oh, Alonso was saying, Mommy, um, I need to be taken to the hospital. I'm in pain because he was beaten by the CID um, officers at CDU today. And so the officer closed the door. So I said, OK, baby, I'll see that you get um, um, Dr. K. And I called the lawyer. So. The officer told me I, I'd have to come out of the station or he'll put me in the cell. What they do, that's police brutality. I ain't telling no lie. We been by the, the cross station. The police told me, he came to my face, tell me free go, free go. He likes to put a cap in me. And I just doing my, my own business starting on the side of the road. Someone recorded part of the incident outside the police station on camera. As you can see, a relative attempts to go to the ambulance to see Butterfield and is then questioned by police and told to leave the area. By that time, other relatives had already gathered on the adjacent property to watch the ambulance pull off. Superintendent Wilson says complaints like the one made by Wilson's family are not uncommon, yet families are encouraged to speak out if they feel a loved one has been mistreated while in police custody. These types of complaints is not unusual for members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Um, we apprehend, we take persons into custody every minute of the day. Um, and so I guess it is normal for an individual to complain um, that, some, that he or she is not feeling well. And so once that comes to the attention of police officers, then the normal procedure laid down by the commissioner's policy ought to kick in. 
the police force, in fact, senior command of the organization does not encourage um, such thing as police brutality. That is a no-no for the organization. But when reports are received um, that alleges that a loved one was brutalized by members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, then an investigation will automatically kick in. And if an officer is found um, to be at fault, then um, the commissioner um, who takes a very hard line approach to such allegation. Wilson says procedure was followed in Butterfield's case and an ambulance was called to the police station when he complained of pain. Upon examination, EMS personnel determined that Butterfield needed to be seen by a doctor. He was taken to the Princess Margaret Hospital under police supervision. Wilson says family members are invited to file a report of alleged police brutality at the Complaints and Corruption Unit at police headquarters. And if anyone has a complaint against an officer of the South Central Grove Police Station, Wilson says those complaints can can either be filed with him or with the unit designed to investigate those matters. Meanwhile, Butterfield's brother, Ivan Forbes, remains in police custody. Wilson says he's doing just fine. The investigation into Wednesday's murder in Coconut Grove continues. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. Even as the murder count climbs, the Royal Bahamas Police Force is reporting a high murder detection rate. Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade told NB12 the detection rate is just shy of 80 percent. That's up from the 70 percent rate recorded in October and a huge leap from before June when fewer than 50 percent of murders had been solved. The rate, uh, when I last looked at the figures, um, I think we were just shy of about 80 percent. I don't watch them as you, just shy. I just looked at them a few days ago and counting because you find that every day we, we turn the corner on one or two more of those murders. And in many other categories we're seeing some good things. But you know there's something significant that I want to mention and that is this. Despite how good our detection rate is, I don't get excited about that. 110 people have been murdered so far this year. On Monday, 27-year-old Charles Hanna Jr. of Fox Court, Oaksfield, was charged with the December 22nd murder of Javel Gardner. Police also closed the gruesome murder of the five-year-old boy who was allegedly stabbed to death. 20-year-old Wenzel Knowles of Camp Road was charged with that murder. Greenslade says while he is happy police have been able to solve a significant number of this year's murders, he is more focused on prevention. We need to look at the prevention side of the house. We don't want these things to happen in the first place. And I asked the public again, well, you know these people that are doing these things, turn them in. Turn them in. I don't care who they are to you, turn them in. I'm not going to cloak any family members that commit crimes. I'm not going to do it. And I asked the Bahamas to join me as commissioner in turning in people that commit crimes. Don't give us this excuse about I called the police. If you called the police and you didn't, call the commissioner. Okay, so if the commissioner's failed you, I apologize now and I'll try not to fail you today and tomorrow. Well, two Bahamians spent Christmas in a United States jail cell after they were apprehended by the U.S. Coast Guard during an alleged attempt to smuggle five Chinese nationals into that country, according to international reports. The Sun Sentinel reported yesterday that Bahamian boat captains Renwood Roll and Joey Wendell Stewart were allegedly in waters off Palm Beach County with their Chinese passengers when their motor died. They are reportedly charged with one federal count of attempting to bring aliens to the United States for the purpose of commercial advantage or private financial gain. The Chinese nationals, one man and four women, were taken to a U.S. Border Patrol station where they were processed. The Chinese nationals are expected to be deported. Roll reportedly told U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents that he was to be paid $1,500 to transport the Chinese passengers. The men were reportedly on a 20-foot Mako fishing boat and were apprehended around 4 a.m. on December 24th. As the New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade fast approaches, the deputy chairman of the Parade Management Committee has taken exception to claims that the scoring system for the Boxing Day Parade was flawed. Leaders of the Saxons Junkanoo Group, which placed fourth, have questioned the integrity of the system, even suggesting collusion among judges. The Parade Management Committee admits that the smartphone system did not work out on Boxing Day morning. However, officials insist that the Junkanoo results are quite correct. Vonig Toot reports. While a glitch did force managers of the Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade to scrap their new smartphone judging system, Deputy Chairman of the Parade Management Committee, Charmaine Roll, is denying claims that Junkanoo results may be incorrect. 
The Shell Saxon Superstars, which was the first Chalkano group to rush out of the gate on Boxing Day morning, has filed a dispute. Leaders allege irregularities with the scoring system and collusion among judges. However, Roll insists that they reverted to the manual method of judging even before the Saxons appeared on bay. At about 10 to 12, codes were just distributed to us for the smartphones itself. As you know, Saxon has to be lined up at 1201, start or else there would be issued a penalty. It takes us about approximately 45 minutes to do the distribution of the, of the codes. If you calculate that precisely, the Saxons would have already been across the square, in the square, and would not have been judged. In that instant, my chairman, Mr. Douglas Hanna, instructed me, Charmaine, at this time, we need to revert to the manual writing for now. The Parade Management Committee's GPS system suggests scores were being entered for the Saxons while another group was performing. However, Roll says the 73 judges wrote down the scores on the sheets provided, then later entered them into the smartphones. She says any concerns junkanoers may have had about the scoring system could have been cleared up with a simple telephone call. All the scores were in. Would the scores reflect? That is it. I don't want any groups to feel that they were not judged. They were judged. That manual system was excellent. It's a good thing that we, we put that safety net there to make sure that we protect the integrity of the judges. You know, you have a lot of talk out there that, oh, this group has a main score, oh, that group has a main score. That's incorrect. Okay, you know, sometimes as behemoths, we jump to conclusions too quickly, and, you know, it's always two sides to every story. So we just wanted to get that out to the public to let them know the scoring was done properly. Roll says the Parade Management Committee is now trying to work out problems with those smartphones to ensure they are up and running in time for the New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade. We have a few more meetings that we are trying to uh, get together with um, the JCNP, uh, the tech guy, our team. We're going to work with them. And, you know, and another thing that is out there that um, I'm hearing that groups were scored three and four times. The phone itself, once you program a score in the phone, that goes out of the phones automatically. So if one group passes, their, their scores are no longer in the phone. Their names are no longer in the phone. As for whether scores may have been tampered with, Roll says the judge's unfamiliarity with the new system may have simply given that impression. She also responded to claims that the system is flooded with old judges. We need to stop this. We are bombarding these persons too much. At one point, there's going to be not, nobody to judge the parade itself. You know, you have to have seasoned people. Roll says judges are frustrated, but they plan to meet at least twice in the coming days to ensure this issue does not arise following the New Year's Day parade. Reporting for MB12, I'm Vonique Toot. Still to come on NB12, the former Mortgage Corporation chairman not pleased with the government's mortgage relief plan.